And welcome back to the second half hour of The Factor Uncensored. Our next story is an example of what some say is blatant racism. Arizona Representative Eli Crane referred to black people as colored people during a floor debate about the military's focus on diversity. Yes, some people still refer to black people as colored in 2023. My amendment has nothing to do with whether or not colored people or black people or anybody can serve, okay? It has nothing to do with color Mr. Your Speaker. Skin. Representative Crane has since walked that comment back saying it was a slip of the tongue and that he misspoke. My next guests are state representatives Ron Reynolds and John Jolanda Jones. Both are calling for more widespread condemnation of Crane. Well, first of all, guys, what do you think about that? When we talk about many uh, Republicans in this day and age are against diversity, inclusion, and then one who's against it says this about the military. Your thoughts about black people, rather. Your thoughts on this. Uh, State Representative Jolanda Jones, let's begin with you. So you know what? I think back to those signs that I used to say that said white people drink here or swim here and colored people swim here or eat here. I think back to segregation. I think back to when we definitely were second class citizens. And I and it makes me just wonder now it's open season on us. I mean, they've already reversed affirmative action. Um, we've gotten rid of a, basically affirmative action here in Texas. We're getting rid of DEI. Can't talk about Barbara Jordan. Can't talk about Harry Tubman. Clearly, the guy's culturally incompetent. I do not believe he misspoke, as he said. I believe he got caught and he's trying to fix it. But it's it's. I mean, it, when people show who you, when people show us who they are, we need to believe them. And he showed us that he is a racist. And I'm very disappointed. He's a congressman. And with Republicans controlling the Congress like they do, I worry about what's going to happen with black people uh, nationwide. Representative Reynolds, do you have the same concern when you hear uh, Representative Crane talk like that? Absolutely. My colleague, Representative Jones, is right spot on. This is reminiscent of white supremacy that was said out loud during uh, the, the 50s before the passage of the Civil Rights Act. Of 1964. This set a, this is really, he said the quiet part out loud. These people are emboldened from Trump's MAGA movement where he says they're fine people on both sides. He's stoked uh, the, 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 the white supremacists, the Proud Boys, uh, all the Oath Keepers, all of them to resurge that they can come out and, and take the sheets off. That they used to wear the sheets back in with the Ku Klux Klan to keep their faces covered. Now they're just open and notorious because of Trump. So yes, this was not him misspeaking. He was he said what he felt in his heart. This was animus. And I believe that we as people of color and all people of good conscience have to speak truth to power and call these races out so that they cannot have cover, so that they cannot feel that this is okay. I commend uh, Congresswoman Beatty and the Congressional Black Caucus for calling it out. I'm so happy that she called to have his comments stricken from the record, which they did, but that's not enough. Uh, this is the sentiment and the animus that exists not just in Congress, but right here in Texas. And we saw that when we passed, unfortunately, the anti-diversity, equity, and inclusion in Texas. So I'm not giving Texas a pass because many of our colleagues just hasn't said that quiet part out loud. Uh, they're smarter than Congressman Crane, but we see this with their policies and what they're doing right now in the Texas legislature uh, under Governor Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Patrick's leadership. And Representative Jones, should there be a rebuke from his own party, his Republican Party, saying this is not who we are? And if they allow it to stand, is this telling us this is who they are? It absolutely is telling us who they are. The Republicans should have asked for a rebuke, but of course they don't. And it's like uh, Representative Reynolds said here in Texas, we set the clock back. So it's not just here in Texas. It's not just in D.C. It's everywhere. We have to call out racism every single solitary time we see it. And we have to let people know that it's unacceptable. And and you can see that here in Texas, Isaiah, where they are literally going around attacking all of the urban, which is a uh, code for where the black people live, mm -hmm. all of the urban areas, Houston, Dallas, and they are and they are trying to have the the state micromanage them and they're doing the same thing at the federal level so yes we need to call it out 
Yes, the Congressional Black Caucus did what they were supposed to do. No, the Republican Party has not done what they are supposed to do because what they are trying to do since Trump, like Rep. Reynolds said, is they're trying to be more MAGA. They're trying to be more conservative. They're trying to go back to the good old days of Dixie where they used to hang us. That is exactly what they're trying to do. And I'm glad you're talking about this because it is a thing. No one's blowing anything out of the water. No one's bringing up the word racism like wrongly. It is absolutely right. It is absolutely wrong for him to do that and say that. And we are not colored people. And we are not going to go back and we're not going to be drinking from separate water fountains. We're not going to be going to separate schools. We are African American and we deserve to be referred to as such. And Representative Reynolds, you said what we have seen so far is not enough. What do you think should happen to this congressman? I think that if uh, the Republicans were serious about uh, their wanting to be a open tent and welcoming African Americans, they would call out and denounce his comments. Speaker McCarthy had that chance. Other Republican leaders had that chance, and they didn't. The fact is, Representative Jones is right. They're coddling these people. They're embracing these people as part of their establishment to secure elections. And these people Racist folks are embedded in the Republican primary. Now, all Republicans aren't racist. I'm not trying to say that, but they have many races that they embrace and they uh, 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 accept. And when you don't denounce it and call it out, you're being complicit. And they are they're telling us that they don't care about us by not denouncing this, by this Governor DeSantis and uh, this anti-woke movement and in, in ending diversity, equity, and inclusion. Governor Abbott during Black History Month saying that no more diversity, equity, inclusion in Texas. So Republicans are taking us back, and I do believe that they are very comfortable with taking away our voting rights if it means that they can hold on to power. And that is why it's so important for people of good conscience, that's not just black folks, but white people of good conscience to say, no, enough is enough. This is not right. And this is not the party that I'm a part of. And they need to denounce it. But if they don't do it, then they're complicit and they're accepting of it. I'd like to be recognized to have the words colored people stricken uh, from the record. I find it offensive and very inappropriate. Wow. Welcome back to the Factor on Censor. You just heard from Ohio Representative Joyce Beatty. She was visibly and understandably furious. And Arizona Representative Eli Crane use of the word, the term colored people on the House floor last Thursday. Now, Texas State Representatives Ron Reynolds and Jolanda Jones continue their discussion about that term tonight. And Representative Jones, is this about holding on power for the other side? Oh, for sure. They are stoking the fires. They are speaking in white speak and they are making white people afraid of us and they are using terms when white people were clearly the majority and controlled everything, they were using those terms. It's the same with Senator Tuberville, who's holding the military hostage uh, over racism. They're not being called out. And, even and explain the that, uh, Representative Jones. He used to be the coach, uh, I think, for Auburn. That's uh, right. Very respected. He thinks that because he coached black people that that means he's not racist. He's racist. He speaks in racist language. He is refusing to confirm military people so that we can, I guess, continue to be a great, strong nation military-wise. And they're not really calling him out. And he actually didn't want to come back and, and accept that he was, that he spoke in racial terms, but there was so much pressure that eventually he started trying to back off. And again, his excuse was, well, I coached a whole bunch of black people, therefore I'm not racist. No, you used a whole bunch of black people to make your football team good. And that's what they were for. So they've always been for your use and for your entertainment, not for our intellect. So, yes, yeah, so it's a movement to take us back. And let me tell you, power can seize nothing without demand. Yes. White people are losing power, and they are doing everything they can to hold on to it. And they are stoking racial undertones for everything. They are changing laws. They are gerrymandering maps. They are taking public school funding. For example, look at HISD, where they have taken over HISD, where it's a majority-minority school. They are taking over all of the strong minority uh, governmental entities and quasi-governmental entities to try to hold on to power. And unfortunately, I know this may be controversial, but the black people that they're using are like Clarence Thomas. That's right. So they, That's so right. they get somebody who looks like us Uncle Tom. to impress us. Yeah. 
that and, part. And Isaiah, I have to say this really quickly. And I'm just going to be very frank because I can I can say this on the Isaiah factor because we keep it real. They want our black ass on the basketball court, slamming basketballs, making touchdowns on their football field, winning sprints like Jelana did on their track team. But they don't want us in the classroom and in the boardroom. And that they're OK with uh, uh, us as long as we are helping them make money or for entertainment purposes, athletes and entertainment. But they don't want us as intellectuals. They don't want us in their classroom. So. We had to call out the hypocrisy, and the senator was okay with as long as he was recruiting those Division One athletes uh, to play on his, on his team. But he doesn't want them to be represented as professors at universities, and that is why they have this nonsense of critical race theory. They don't want us teaching about slavery. They don't want us teaching about Jim Crow. They don't want us teaching about white supremacy. But that is what this country is embedded in, and we have to call it out for what it is. We can't etch a sketch it that. Not talking about it takes it away. Disparities exist because of those uh, uh, things that they used us to build wealth. When you talk about slavery and even after the emancipation, slavery by another name. Uh, and so we have to keep speaking truth to power. We're not playing the race card. We're just simply calling it for what it is. And they don't like that. They're uncomfortable with that. And I tell and you what, imagine, imagine, imagine if black parents would keep their kids from going to these big white schools. Say that. Imagine if we went to HBCUs, because back during segregation, when black people went to black schools and white people went to white schools, our athletes were better, right? That's why the Southwest Conference integrated, because they saw how great the black athletes were, and then all of a sudden they started getting them. And we really need for black people to stop thinking white folks' ice is colder. They yes. really do, because because cold is cold. And if we did that, we would force them to look at us in a different light. Because trust me, if all the black athletes went to HBCUs, Nike would follow them, Adidas would follow them, Under Armour would follow them, because they're going to go where the where the best athletes are, right? That's just what's going to happen. So yeah, this is a whole thing around the country, and this is just the latest example of it. But. I, I respectfully suggest to you, all you have to do is look at the news, and you see, see this happening all the time by people, by white people in power who are trying to continually oppress black people, and they're speaking like racist whisperers to get everybody back in the fold because they're trying to take this country back. Which, let me be clear, this country has never been great for us.